welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. My videos usually focus on affordable enthusiast cars. Not today, though. I'm going to tell you my story of the Ferrari Testarossa. Hope you enjoy it. I was 10 years old when the Ferrari Testarossa came out. Like most kids, I had a framed poster of a Lamborghini Countach on my wall, and I was fascinated with everything supercar related. I used to feverishly read all the period magazine top speed challenge articles. I loved watching Miami Vice. Well, at least until I watched an episode with my parents, which were horrified blaming each other for letting me watch it. 340 horsepower, 180 miles an hour. New paint, new rubber. Absolutely essential for any type of serious police work, huh? Got that right. Oddly, dressing like Crockett and Tubbs was popular in grade school even in my hometown of Milton, Ontario, Canada, which in retrospect was the furthest place on earth from being Miami, Florida. Ferrari Testarossas were everywhere in the 80s besides the mean middle class suburban streets of Milton. Testarossas were well represented on my slot car track. Radio Shack was my favorite destination at the mall and they had a totally rad Testarossa. I had multiple Hot Wheels and Matchbox Testarossas. Outrun was my favorite arcade game in the whole Chuck E. Cheese. While at home, I often raced my Testarossa through the fictitious canyons of Test Drive. Fast forward to 2022 and I still can't afford a real Testarossa, although the want is still very real. So other than a recognized cultural icon of the 80s, what exactly was a Ferrari Testarossa? The name Testarossa was a tribute to the mighty 1957-250 Testarossa racing car. Testarossa literally means redhead in Italian, which refers to the red painted cam covers on the 12 cylinder engines that adorn both cars. The Type F110 Ferrari Testarossa went into production in 1984 as a replacement for the Ferrari Berlinetta Boxer. The Testarossa was a 12 cylinder mid engine sports car styled by Pininfarina. The focus of my story will be the 84 91 Testarossa. The TR in 512TR also stands for Testarossa. Although it was practically a clean sheet redesign and in my mind is a different car altogether. The Testarossa was unveiled to the public at the 1984 Paris Auto Show. The two-door coupe featured a rear mid-engine design with a 5-speed manual transmission. This layout kept the center of gravity in the middle which increased stability and improved the car's handling. The weight distribution was 40% front and 60% rear. The Testarossa was the answer to the shortcomings of the 1981 Berlinetta Boxer 512i. The first obstacle the Testarossa design was to overcome was the Berliner Boxer 512i's interior temperature issues. The interior temperature got increasingly hotter from the heat radiating off the coolant pipes that ran from the front mounted radiator to the mid mounted engine. The Testarossa's fix for this issue was two side mounted radiators located behind the passenger compartment. Those signature Testarossa side stakes were not only sexy, they directed air into the side mounted radiators. The strakes also appeased safety legislation which did not allow large open air vents on cars. The Testarossa's design also needed to rectify the Berlinetta Boxer 512i's lack of luggage space. To fix this issue, the Testarossa was half a foot wider and had a 2.5 inch longer wheelbase than the Boxer. The added width allowed for carpeted storage space in the front of the car. Cool kids call it a frunk. The increased wheelbase of the Testarossa opened up some storage space behind the seats. The roof line of the Testarossa was also half an inch taller than the Boxer, which increased headroom. Pininfarina designed the Testarossa. The Pininfarina design team consisted of Ian Cameron and another group of men with impossible to pronounce names. Guido Campoli. Emanuele Nicosia. Leonardo Fioravanti. Diego Attina. One of the men in this photo is Diego. Three of the men are not. The design team leader was... Leonardo Fioravanti. He previously designed or helped design many Ferraris.
Initially, the Testarossa was a... Emanuele Nicosia. Design, however... Leonardo Fioravanti. Being trained in aerodynamics helped with the layout of the car. Originally, the designers were trying to make the side intakes as small as possible, but then they decided on making them a styling element. The side strakes defined the Testarossa, and they were mimicked on many period aftermarket body kits. The Testarossa's body created enough downforce that a rear spoiler was not required. The slippery Ferrari had a coefficient of drag of 0.36, which was significantly lower than the competitor's poster car Lamborghini Countach 0.42. Like the Berlinetta Boxer 512i, the Testarossa used double wishbone front and rear suspension. The rear suspension used unequal length wishbones, coil springs, twin shock absorbers, and an anti-roll bar. The drivetrain and suspension were designed to be removed as a unit from the bottom of the car, so the engine and timing belts could be serviced. Testarossa's traction was improved by adding 10-inch wide aluminum rear wheels. The 1985 Testarossa had magnesium knockoff wheels with a 16.33 inch, 415 millimeter diameter. These special wheels use Michelin TRX tires. The tires were weird metric sizes 240-45 VR415 at the front and 280-45 VR415 at the rear. 1986 Testarossas got the same wheel design but the diameter was changed to a standard 16 inches with a width of 8 inches at the front and 10 inches at the rear. The new wheels were shod with Goodyear Gatorback 225-50VR16 front tires and 255-50VR16 rear tires. Mid-1988, the suspension was redesigned and the wheels were again changed, this time from knockoff to standard Ferrari 5 pattern, but they managed to retain the same style. The front rotor diameter was 12.17 inch and the rear rotor diameter was 12.2 inch. Testarossa's drivetrain was also an evolution of the Berlinetta Boxer, the Testarossa engine used the same displacement and compression ratio, but unlike the Berlinetta Boxer, the Testarossa had dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder, a whopping 48 valves in total. The heads were adorned with signature red valve covers. The Testarossa had a naturally aspirated 4.9 liter longitudinally mounted Ferrari flat 12 engine. Lubrication was supplied with race car style dry sump oiling system. The engines had a compression ratio of 9.2 to 1. The Testarossa's engine had 385 horsepower at 6,300 RPM and a maximum of 316 foot-pounds of torque at 4,500 RPM. Early U.S. cars had the same engine, but they had five less horses. Stock performance. MotorWeek tested the Ferrari Testarossa, and it ran the quarter mile in 13.5 at 106 miles per hour. It did 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.5 seconds. The top speed of the Testarossa is estimated at 290 kilometers an hour, or 180 miles per hour. Aftermarket performance. Ram air intake. Headers. Free flow exhaust. Engine upgrade with twin turbos. Handling goodies. Sports suspension. Porn star brakes. Buying a Ferrari Testarossa. As you can imagine, there are a few things to look out for when buying a Ferrari Testarossa. I assume most of you are American or Canadian. If my assumption is correct, make sure your prospective Testarossa is a US spec car. There are quite a few Euro spec cars floating around, and the work required to make them US legal was not likely done at a Ferrari dealership. The quality of that work could be suspect. Check the date code on tires, especially on early cars with the special TRX tires. If they're older than 7 years old, they have timed out. Factor in replacing them into your price of the car. Try to find a car with a full service history. Testarossas require an engine out cam belt service every 15,000 miles or every five years. The service usually costs over $5,000, hence the importance of the service records. Haggerty claims the average value of a 1988 Testarossa to be $150,000. The prices are on the rise, so get yours soon before they start going for Berlin at a boxer money. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Ferrari Testarossa. Hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting. Run.